presentation. All right, let's talk about step number three, presentation. Presentation is very important. And we want to take a look at three different things about presentation. So we want to look at the individual product, right? The individual product as it's packaged for retail to your end consumer. So the individual packaging, we're going to call it the interior packaging. It's how your product looks on the shelf. Whether this is a boutique store or a box store, big or small, doesn't matter. You need to consider how your product is presented, right? How does it look when it's hanging on the wall? How does it look when it's sitting on a shelf? How does it look when it's on the table? How is this product going to be presented? So some of the things you need to think about are padding. So this first one over here, padding. This could be, you know, if your product is in a box, you might have bubble wrap around it. Maybe you've made a mug and you have a mug box and then inside that mug box is um, some nice tissue paper, right? Or bubble wrap, there's tissue paper. Tissue paper comes in all sorts of colors. Maybe you want to choose a tissue paper that matches your brand colors. There's also craft paper. If you have a more environmentally oriented product or a more nature oriented product, maybe you want something that's natural colored. Of course, there's foam backer board for um, mounting prints on. If you're working in two dimensional artwork, perhaps you're going to mount it on archival foam backer board with corners or something like that so it doesn't get bent and wrinkled, right? And then there's archival sleeves. You can slide that foam backer into an archival sleeve and fold it closed so that nothing gets spilled on it and it doesn't get damaged. This is for two-dimensional items. Um, certainly with iConnect Crafts products, we use plastic sleeves and then they are stapled closed at the top. They have what's called a hang tag across the top with a hole in the top so that it can go on a little hook. And that is all, all the materials, the chipboard and the insert go into the plastic sleeve, right? And then those are some things you want to think about with um, padding. So what's on the inside or outside of your individual product? How is your product either wrapped or what is it contained in? right? So the packaging of your individual products, whether it's 2D or three-dimensional, doesn't matter. You just need to give some consideration to how it's going to be presented, the individual object. Are you going to wrap it? Are you going to tie a ribbon around it? Or are you going to use string, leather, lace? How are you going to present your art and designs and products, remember we're thinking of our art and design as products now, how are you going to present the individual unit and how should that be displayed? What kinds of other materials go with it so that it looks nice and is protected and is maybe even a little fancy, dare I say. So think about the padding. All right, so the next one is the features. On your actual design, your product, you may need to include some sort of documentation about the features. Remember we talked about benefits and features and the differences? Features are the physical details of the product. What it's made of, how to clean it, it's archival attributes, whether it's made with pigment inks or archival paper. Um, these types of things are features, the sizes, right? So if you've done two-dimensional artwork, you might have created a limited edition print run. 
and a limited edition print run, as we've talked about, is a limited number of prints. So you're promising I'm only going to print 50 of these or 100 of these or however many it is that you say. And so when you do a limited edition, you want to have some sort of marking indicating which number of the print run it is and how many total they are in the print run. This is normally written as a fraction, so 1 over 50 or number 5. It's the fifth one that was printed out of 50. And a lot of artists and photographers, when they do limited edition prints, they'll write it in the lower left-hand corner of the print, but they'll oftentimes include print run details. So on the back, they might include a sticker that includes some information about the inks that were used. If they're archival pigment-based inks, they might also include information about the paper type if they've selected a lovely and expensive paper like Epson Velveteen paper or something like that. They might include other details about the um, limited edition print like the title or when and where it was taken, those types of things. So that's all information that can be included with a two-dimensional piece of artwork. You could include information about the types of paint you use, um, a short write-up on the process. All of these things are interesting to the customer and the consumer. They like to read these types of things. I know when I look at a piece of work, I like to flip it over and see what type of information has been included with it. You could also include a certificate of authentic authenticity. The certificate of authenticity is something to prove that this piece of artwork, this original, this limited edition, whatever, came from your studio. And this is something that I've seen artists use to show that this work is an original, came from your hands, and was made with loving care. So, the other thing you could include in any sort of individual packaging is the story write-up. Now, this is oftentimes one of the big selling points. It's the benefits, not the features. This is the story behind the artwork. So the story write-up is a wonderful sales tool for selling your artwork because it's making an impression on the customer. It's creating a connection with them. It's creating a story with them that they can relate to. So for example, there are lots of beaded bracelets out there. There's lots of people making bracelets right now from semi-precious stones. But one of the most successful artists I've seen doing this tells the story of the stone in relationship to her grandmother. She talks about her mother or her grandmother, give, I think it was her mother, giving her a piece of jewelry each year on her birthday and telling her that this represented her inner beauty or how much she'd grown. And that even though these little pieces of jewelry were not expensive, her mother made them special to her because of the story she told about the significance, about how this represented her inner beauty and not to let anybody, you know, uh, make fun of her or bully her, that she was beautiful on the inside. And she tells these stories and then relates it to the stone. So the semi-precious stone might be, you know, agate or jade or any of these stones that have some symbolism wrapped around them. Jade is a symbol of wealth in the Asian culture. So by telling a story wrapped around the materials and maybe your own personal experience, or something like that, create a bond, connection with the customer and the collector. Symbolism, we just talked a little bit about that. So symbolism is another thing that you can include or be part of the story write-up and the packaging. Symbolism could be from art history, could be from Native American culture like we use in iConnect Crafts. So in iConnect Crafts, 
we have the symbolism of the animal written up as a short paragraph and we did research um, extensive research on the symbolism of the animals in either Native American culture or in Asian culture or in mythology to give them more meaning. Directions. If your product has care instructions, how to clean it, whether it's dishwasher safe, whether it's microwavable safe, how you should clean the oil painting if it gets dusty, if uh, how to put it together if it needs assembly like I connect craft the totem poppets. We have a picture of the animal assembled. So directions are a great thing to include as well. I never forget, I bought one of my first oil paintings when I was in my early 20s, and there was a short write-up included that basically said, um, if you want to clean the dust off of this oil painting, use a dusting rag. Do not spray it with chemicals, just use maybe a little bit of um, water on the rag if you really need to. And they gave care instructions and I really appreciated that because I wanted it to last a long time and I thought it was a very valuable piece. And it was, I mean, it's, it was my first art purchase so it made an impact on me. And it, I think it went on further to say that, you know, you shouldn't place it over a fireplace and to place it away from direct sunlight to keep the colors the brightest. And so that was my first introduction to preserving a piece of artwork. So providing some directions about how your product should be used or cared for can really be an appreciated detail. And then finally, there's hazard warnings. If your product has small parts, things that could fall off, um, you might want to put some sort of hazard warning. Or if it has toxic materials or metals in it, maybe it's not supposed to be drunk out of, maybe it's only ornamental and the pigments and um, metals that you've used for it, it's just, it's just a vase. It's not to be drunk out of, you know. Um, you might want to tell people that. <laughs> so if there's any sort of hazard warnings, if there's marbles or small balls, you need to put a hazard warning on it that says it's a choke hazard for children, uh, three and under, if there's small pieces, that type of thing. Okay, so that is the packaging of the individual product that you want to think about. The product as it will sit on the shelf. Does it need a little stand? Does it need a little box? Um, a little box lined with something can really be a nice feature. So think about how you're going to present the individual product for retail, whether it be at a boutique or craft fair or wherever. Even if you're just selling it at a fine art studio or at a craft fair, that person, you still, the person purchasing it, Still has to carry it home. So how can you protect it for them? What do they need to take this product home? What information does that packaging need to contain so that their purchase is special and relatable and so that they can care for your artwork for many years to come and enjoy it? Okay. So the next topic we want to talk about is wholesale packaging.